Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I am your host, Mark Verdi, the content marketing expert, bringing you three new episodes each week where I and top-level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. Hello, Breakthrough Success listeners. I just wanted you all to know before the episode actually starts, I've been working a little bit behind the scenes to give you something really special. So a while ago, I wrote my book, Content Marketing Secrets, which helps people create, promote, and optimize their content for growth and revenue. And I just put the finishing touches together to offer that for free to anyone who is interested. So if you want your free copy of Content Marketing Secrets, all you have to do is head over to markgaberti.com slash book. Now, let's jump right into the episode. And if you want to achieve your breakthrough in business, one of the big things you need is social proof. You need people reviewing your products, reviewing your services, uh, giving you good testimonials saying how you have helped them because all that social proof really adds up. But it can sometimes feel really challenging to get that social proof. So we're going to explore how do we get all these raving reviews and testimonials for our products and services and our businesses in this episode. So today's guest is a multifaceted entrepreneur who believes in building integrity into everything he does. He has founded businesses in e-commerce, marketing, and financial services. He has generated over $50 million in revenue for his businesses, collected over 10,000 reviews and testimonials from customers, been named one of the most creative people in financial services, and has been called the salesman who doesn't sell. Today's guest for episode 286 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Brian Greenberg. Brian, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Mark. Brian, I'm really happy to have you on the Breakthrough Success Podcast because getting testimonials and reviews, it the importance cannot be uh, overemphasized. It is so critical to uh, have that social proof uh, for your business. Uh, so we're going to jump into that. But before we do, uh, I'm wondering if you could uh, give us some background. I know you have a book called The Salesman Who Doesn't Sale. I wonder if you could give us some background to uh, why you wrote that book and just some of the other parts of your background in business as well. Sure. Look, I, I wrote the book to basically help people that are starting in business, or are looking to expand their business and how to do that online. I've been in the internet marketing game for quite some time. I started back in 2002. So I've kind of seen the whole evolution. And throughout that whole time, I've been able to run businesses that rank very high in Google, always on the first page for some of the most competitive keywords uh, on the internet. Uh, I've owned a lot of e-commerce sites. I actually owned a organic search engine marketing company that I sold. And currently, I run True Blue Life Insurance, which is an online life insurance agency, and we sell in all 50 states, and it's a very competitive niche. So I wanted to get everything out uh, so I could, you know, so I could help people and better market myself and my companies. And, I mean, uh, it's an interesting backstory. Uh, I mean, you, I mean, you're just all over. Like, you have so many different businesses that you're doing. You now have the life insurance in all 50 states. So, I mean, you're a real go-getter. I mean, I just talked a little bit about you in the intro, and you shed some light on the backstory. Uh, one of the things, though, that I want to jump into right away is getting those reviews. I mean, I mentioned earlier you've gotten over 10,000 reviews and testimonials. Some people would be really happy if they just get 10 for, like, their Kindle book or something like that. So I wonder if you could shed some light into uh, how you are able to accumulate that many uh, reviews. What does that process look like? Well, the first thing I like to do is put a value to reviews. I think that's the first thing I like to convey. Uh, most people don't know how much reviews are worth. There's no real you know, return of investment or ROI on it. Uh, so I'm going to tell you what I value reviews at. If I get a review for my product or service on my website, I value that at $100 each. And not only that, every additional year I get about $5 out of it, just from increased conversion rates. Now, if I get a review on a third-party website, such as Google Business or the Better Business Bureau uh, or Yelp, I value, value each one of those at $250 and each additional year at about $50. Uh, you know, a review on, on those places can absolutely increase your business. It increases your conversion rate. And what I find is, you know, before someone will make a purchase 
from you or use your services, they're going to go online. They're going to look up your business name followed by reviews and comments, and they're going to check you out. So, you know, the first thing uh, is to value it. And if you value it, you're much more likely to ask for it, which is the, one of the first steps is to ask for it. And there's a lot of different ways to do that, Mark. And, I mean, there are certainly a lot of ways to get reviews. There are a lot of different tactics and for some people, let's say that you are just getting into the game, you don't really have that many relationships yet, uh, how do you get the initial reviews? Do you uh, go up to friends and family? Do you start building relationships? Like, what is it? What would your advice be for someone who is really just getting started and doesn't feel like they have a big enough network yet? Absolutely. So, look, uh, you know, a lot of people have a hard time asking for reviews. It's a tough thing. So I always utilized email. All right, I want to uh, let people know that first. Uh, I use automated emails. So, you know, after we deliver a product or service and they're happy, they're very conducive to the reciprocity principle. You know, you did something for them, they want to do something for you. I send them a nice uh, feedback form that I control. Now, uh, you know, it's real easy. They have like, you know, five stars on it. They click it, they go to my site, and they could enter a comment. I send them that review on day three, day seven, and day 10. Now, only if they give me a five-star review do I actually go back and give them a, that exact comment and ask them to leave the same review on third-party websites like Google Business or the Better Business Bureau. Now, it's very important if you're sending people to these third-party websites that you give them the exact URL. Now, Google Business, you know, you kind of got to look up the maps and get your Google ID but you can send them to the exact page where they enter in the review. It gives them the pop-up, enter review. Same thing with the Better Business Bureau. The last thing you wanted to do is click around. And I always give them the exact comment that they gave so they don't have to think about it. Now, you asked an interesting question, Mark, is how to get started. You know, yes, you know, some family and friends, that, that's a, a real small start. You know, one of the things that uh, I've always done, Mark, is when I'm first starting, I'll call the customer. I'll call them, you know, and I'll ask them. I'll make sure they was, did everything go well, Any, any, anything I can do. Now, people are so impressed that I'll, I called them. Uh, you know, they're, they're just, you know, they're happy to help, right? So if there's some sort of issue, they had a problem, well, I'll fix it right then and there. Now, while I got them on the phone, I'll ask them for a review. Out of five stars, how would you rate our service? Great. Uh, can you give me a, maybe a couple comments, a couple sentences? And then I'll get them to say the couple sentences. I'll write it down and I'll read it back to them. Now, the great thing about this is people are so apt to give you great feedback and great star reviews because you're calling as the CEO. It's kind of the same principle that, you know, people don't want to tell someone their baby's ugly. All right. So it's a great way to start building up those early reviews. And that'll get you in the game to begin. And uh, Brian mentions a very interesting point. A lot of people like to communicate through email, through social media, but that phone call will really set you apart. And it's one of the things that can really differentiate you from the bigger guys because uh, the big CEOs of major corporations, they don't have the time to call individual customers. They're more in like decision-making. They are, uh, in some cases, like they're doing a lot of work for one of their books, but the main idea is that a lot of people who are in uh, higher positions, they don't have as much time to reach out, make those phone calls, and connect on a very strong one-to-one -one level basis. But let's say that you get your start, you're building momentum, and you're having a little more difficult time making all those phone calls just due to that scale factor and the limited amount of time that we have. So what's your advice for the bigger businesses or entrepreneurs who feel really swamped because they have a lot of different things going on, what's your advice for them to still be able to get these reviews and create a strong experience even if they can't go on the phone right away? Absolutely. Look, I think it's important to incentivize your employees. So in my insurance business, I have agents talking to pretty much everybody. Now, after they're approved for a policy, all the agents, look, I bonus my agents. I think that's the first thing you should do. Compensate your crew or your employees on getting those good reviews. And there's so much positive that comes from that. 
Now, if you're focused on getting good reviews from the beginning, you know, you're apt to give great customer service, right? The other thing that I have all my uh, customer service and salespeople do is they actually will ask the customer either verbally or by text message or email. They would say, hey, look, uh, you know, it would help so much if you gave me a review. I'm in a contest and it helps or I get a bonus on it. And again, it's that theory of reciprocity. You know, they built up a, a relationship with some of my employees and they want to help. So as soon as you ask, I mean, that's one of the main things is to always ask. If you can do it verbally, great. If you can do it more personal and have one of your employees ask for it, amazing. And then, you know, absolutely just email. Uh, so many people don't email. Now, I do want to say one thing, though. Now, emailing people, a lot of people have hesitation because if they get a bad review on Yelp or Google, you can't get it down, right? So my theory has always been to first ask for a review that I control. It's on my system. So if I get a bad review, Mark, I, I could fix it or I can absolutely just choose not to display it. And the guys that I'm asking to review me on third party websites, which are so valuable and that I can't get taken down, I only ask the guys that give me great reviews. So consequently, I have a ton of five star reviews. You know, it's so impressive. People always look up and click the seals on my website. And my goodness, one of the things they always say when they contact some of our agents is, they can't believe all the great reviews. That's why they chose us. And I mean, I see how the reviews really build up on social proof. You see the top selling books on Amazon. I'm just using Amazon as an example. You see a lot of the top selling books, they have over a hundred reviews and that's not a coincidence. In fact, that's one of the things I'm trying to build up on for some of my books, like getting more reviews for my books. So they to eventually have over a hundred reviews uh, for multiple titles that I currently have. So that's one of the goals that, uh, I'm currently working on one of the things that I want to touch upon is I mean I mean this is I, I've mentioned this number before the fact that you have over ten thousand reviews and testimonials which I find really impressive uh, but I, I'm wondering how exactly did you get to that number ten thousand like what what did the outreach work ethic look like did you reach out to a certain number of people each day did you get a certain number of people into a funnel and uh, reach out to them and nurture that relationship. What did that outreach effort look like to get to where you are now, with those 10,000 reviews and testimonials? I ask every single customer for a review, every single one. Uh, I've been running e-commerce websites and, you know, I've, you know, I've done a lot of business. So everybody, I've always asked for reviews. I, I even ask reviews for two things, which I think people often miss. I ask a review for the product or service that they bought and a review on my company. I've always done that. So I get kind of a double pop, right? Mm -hmm. Even on my insurance business, nobody asks for a review on the actual company and policy they bought. I do, right? And, it, you know, you go on Amazon and you look, right? Well, you'll see people, you know, they'll specify what they reviewed on, the size of the product, the color of the product, a lot more detail. So, you know, if you just continually ask, and you, you automate that system, you know, it's they're just going to come in, right? And if you're focused on giving great customer service as well. Now, one of the, again, I bonus my employees. I always have for reviews, so they're more apt to use them. And I value reviews. And I have a theory at my company. You know, a lot of businesses, they have, you know, the ABC, always be closing. I never did that. I always had ABN, always be nice. And it's like simple ideas like that where we become a little more human, uh, that ABN always be nice instead of uh, closing where you're just viewing the uh, customer as someone who has money in your wallet that should be in your wallet. So I really like that approach of uh, ABN as opposed to ABC. And it really captures, again, that human to human, as I mentioned earlier. And I feel like that uh, gives us an idea of one of the big things that really holds a lot of people back from getting these reviews, getting these testimonials, that uh, idea where um, you're just acting as if the person uh, can only give you a testimonial. You're not thinking about how can I be nice to this person? How can I provide value? You're thinking, when is this person actually going to give me the testimonial? So I feel like that's something that holds a lot of people back. Brian, I wonder if you could share some of your thoughts on what else do you believe holds people back from being able to get a lot of reviews and testimonials for their products, services, and businesses. 
I think so many people, you know, I, 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 sorry, I keep going back to it, but they don't ask. Mm-hmm. You know, people think of it as a term of bragging, or it's just an, it is, look, it is an uncomfortable thing to ask for. Uh, that's why, you know, if you have employees, you know, make sure that you let everybody know how important these reviews are. Uh, I got to go back again. I bonus them. I tell them, you know, we're running the special. I can pay a certain amount. I paid up to $50 for each review that my employees brought in for a while. Build them up. Get them in, in into the, you know, the mindset of this is how we do business, right? If you're not, look, I have agents on my, um, you know, that are employees that don't get a lot of reviews. They get some, but they're from all the automated emails. Then I get others that get two, three reviews every day. Uh you know, it's, it's again, also, you know, kind of hiring the right people. You know, what was the Howard Schultz, the owner of Starbucks? Somebody asked him one time, you know, how do you get everyone in your stores to smile all the time? Mm-hmm. And he said, I just hire people that smile, right? So, you know, hire the right people and make sure that they're asking for it and make sure that they have an incentive to ask for it. I, I even give monthly bonuses to the people that get the most reviews. And if you have that as an initiative, there's, it's inevitable that you're going to start getting all these reviews and you're going to automatically start great, giving great customer service. And it's going to start spinning that wheel of getting a, a great reputation. And I think as we've seen over the years, how important reviews are to closing a sale. I mean, arguably they're one of the most uh, valuable forms of social proof. And it's interesting you mentioned how you incentivize your employees. I know you mentioned this before to uh, get those rewards. I mean, to get those reviews, and my apologies. Uh, and you, uh, in a sense, do that to entice more people to um, participate, to act on this. And one of the things that I'm wondering is where exactly does content marketing play into the review formula? I mean, I could say something like, I'm Breakthrough Success. Uh, please leave a review for a show if you enjoyed this episode. But uh, are there any like key things we could be doing with content marketing to boost our reviews? I think you could leverage the reviews on all your content marketing. Uh, you know, look, I have a much easier time promoting my business because I feel so good about it, right? I, I know that it makes people happy. I know that I have great customer service, and I know that I have all these reviews to back it up. So in any content marketing that I can do, I can say these things, and I can say them with confidence that we're different in our industry. You know, I'm, I'm in a life insurance industry, right, or the insurance industry, and historically people have, you know, very bad stereotypical feelings about that, and, and rightly so. Although I can separate myself from that, saying I'm the good guy in the industry. I'm bringing integrity to the industry, and I can show it. You know, please look at my Better Business Bureau. Please look at my Google business. Uh, If you do that, you know, you're going to go through those, and you're going to, you know, weigh the the odds that you're going to get a great experience like everybody else. Uh, So, you know, it just makes content marketing easier, right? And you know, let's say you're, you're going out to publications and you're trying to get something published. Well, that, that's great, but they're also going to look at your website and they're going to look at your reputation. And if you have all those good reviews, they're going to be more apt to listen to you. You're going to be more apt to be respected as an expert and somebody who runs an honest and ethical and transparent business that any publication or anybody who's publishing anything will want to be associated with. So it's absolutely it's helped me in in every content marketing I've done because I think uh, you know I, I've been it's been easier for me to get those contributorships and those postings. And I mean I really like how content marketing is a way to just amplify like all the hard work that you did. I mean now I mean with that I see uh, beyond the social proof beyond someone going into your sales page or. Uh, online to seeing these reviews, you're leveraging them. That's why I could see the review being worth like $100 on your site or $250 um, for each third-party review. And with that leverage, it really does add up, especially as you can say you've gotten 10,000 reviews, show all these people saying all these great things about you, your bit product services, your businesses. And, I mean, it really does add up and gives you that leverage, as you mentioned, to write for publications, get uh, various speaking gigs. So I, I really see that idea with leverage. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk about now is 
Uh, I know you aren't always this way. Like people who are successful are not always successful. They have to learn their way and experiment their way to the success they want to achieve. So I wonder if you could share with us one big challenge you faced on your journey to getting reviews and building your businesses and a powerful lesson you learned during that challenge. Sure. Uh, look, you know, I've always been very good at internet marketing. I've always been able to rank uh, pretty much any business I went into if, as long as I focused on it. One of the things that held me back a little bit is I tried to do too many things. At one point, I had, you know, eight different companies, and I had about 20 different websites. Now, I had them all doing real well, although I wasn't able to focus on them. And that's a huge thing. I think so many entrepreneurs that are starting out, they'll have so many great ideas, and they'll go into, you know, a whole bunch of them and test the waters on each one of them, although what happens is you get diminishing returns. So I, I do my best to hold myself back. If I see a great idea, I know I can do it, although it's so important to focus. You know, the, you ask uh, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, they say, what's the key to success? They say it's focus. So, you know, I learned that lesson. You know, you get too stressed out. You get spread too thin. If you're doing content marketing, what do you link it to, right? You got all these websites. So I, I highly encourage anybody starting out, pick something. And uh, maybe you pick a few things, but Find something that works and stick with it uh, and give everything you got into it. And then, look, uh, then you can sell it, all right, or, or hire people to run it. Although, please, please focus. Very, very important insight there because I feel like that's where a lot of people hit their downfall. They see all these different things. They see all these different opportunities. But if you spread your time so thinly across all these opportunities, you're not really able to truly leverage one of them. It's how people are mediocre on all the social networks, but they're not really that good on a single social network. They don't have that big uh, influencer level presence on any of them because they're so focused on all of them. That's just one example with focus uh, and the importance of focus being really emphasized. Uh, one of the things I also want to emphasize is the importance of self-education. And this is something that I preach in all my Breakthrough Success episodes. Um, I read a lot of books and I'm sure uh, you've probably read a lot of books too. I mean, you've written the book, so I'm wondering if you could share with us three books that you believe will have a positive impact on us and help us with business. Oh, good question. Yeah, I, I, I'm a reader too. Leaders are readers, right? Yes. I listen to about two audio books a month and a paper book every month. Uh, boy, uh, you know, I, I think one of the personal development books that I always recommend people read first is The Four Agreements uh, by Don Miguel Ruiz. I love that book, and it, it'll teach you so much about how to handle things. You know, one of the, the best thing is not to take things personally. Uh, you know, somebody does something to you that upsets you. It's not you. It's, uh, it's nothing to do with you. Another great book is Getting to Yes. I love this book. It's all on negotiation. Uh, I, think, I believe it's the negotiation tactics that they teach in, at Harvard Business School. And that served me for a, a very, very long time. Uh, another book that I don't always think you know, is something that always sticks out. It's Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers. Uh, you know, it's just that theory of needing to put 10,000 hours into something to become an expert. Uh, that always sunk in so well for me. Also, you know, giving people the opportunity, right? Uh, I like to give, you know, employees, everyone that I'm around, the opportunity to grow, you know, and I treat them like an asset, right? So, it's okay if they take a risk. It's okay if they fail as long as they learn from it. So I, those are the three books I would say, Mark. Brian, thank you for sharing with us those great book recommendations. Those will be in the show notes, markdeberry.com slash E286. And uh, we'll also throw in content marketing secrets in there. That's my book for anyone who wants to grow a content brand, monetize it, and actually be able to create the content because that's a lot of hard work too. You can find it on Audible or Amazon. Just search for Content Marketing Secrets. And before I wrap up this episode, Brian, I've asked you several questions to our time together, but what do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? You know, a lot of people think about, you know, how I can make more money, right? How, how I can uh, make things more profitable. I do believe you should be asking how I can serve more customers. You know, it's, it's a saying that the quickest way to become a billionaire is to serve a billion people. So anything you're doing, make sure that it's serving the customer. 
Brian, awesome question and great last takeaway for us in this episode. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about Brian, he has a book, The Salesman Who Doesn't Sell, A Marketing Guide to Selling While You Sleep, which will be in the show notes. It's on places like Amazon as well. Brian, is there any other uh, place we can go to find you uh, before we close out the episode? Of course. I'd like to give all the listeners the opportunity to get the book, uh, the free audio book download. If they go to brianjgreenberg.com slash breakthrough, they're welcome to go there and uh, uh, download the audio book, and I hope it helps. Brian, thank you so much for sharing that resource. Uh, again, that will be in the show notes. Uh, once again, just thank you for coming on the show and sharing with us how we can get all these awesome reviews for our product, services, and businesses. Thank you, Mark. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered. I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter to learn. 